Hello and welcome to the Shaman's Cave. I'm Renee Barabo. And I'm Sandra Engerman. Welcome everybody. And today we're going to talk about, and I think this was what we are doing, we're influencers. And so how do you influence the people around you? What does it mean to be an influencer? And what are the responsibilities and liabilities of, of this role? And so many of you out there are spiritual teachers, spiritual leaders, you know, influencers in, with your children and your schools, all of these places. How do we show up in that is a really important and timely topic. Yeah, um, I, um, I'll take my glasses off. <laughs> and um, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really, I think this isn't news to anybody. Um, people are searching right now. It, it doesn't matter what people's um, spiritual or religious beliefs are. Uh, there's so much going on in our communities, so much going on in people's health. Um, things are falling apart um, at a pretty rapid rate. And so people are searching for tools. And if you've been doing spiritual work for a while, um, it's not that everybody has to go out there and uh, contribute to their community by getting their community together. You can do your spiritual work at home, but if there's any interest for you to start to bring in some of what we're talking about on the show, you know, uh, we're using languaging that you can actually speak to uh, some of these issues very easily uh, with people in your community. So there are ways to influence your community in really good ways of um, letting them know that there's hope, letting them know that there is a reason for everything that's happening. And how do we come together from a place of spirit and hold each other from love, which creates a form of transformation. Wow. She was being really kind. I was thinking when she was talking, people are just being downright mean out there on social media. <laughs> but when you were talking, I had to reflect a minute that this week I was at a conference called um, Neighborhoods USA. And they were all people like just regular, those people that we were talking about before, the invisible angel type people who are coming out as influencers in their own neighborhoods to make changes and make differences. And I met this woman who was, she had been an attorney in another, in her other world. And she was really coming out militantly, you know, as much as you are militant and about how the parks are being used and what the bathroom situations are in the park. And are they, friendlier and it was just like this whole thing like where she was actually taking her skills back when she was an attorney and now turning it towards her neighborhood to be an influencer and so there was people there was like 900 a thousand people at this conference from all over the united states who have taken up with these neighborhoods and really starting to change things from a different perspective and you know i don't know that they were shamanic or anything i mean there was one man who came up to me and and i did give him my book when's the spirit and and he comes back the next day he goes you don't have the dakota the 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 dogon and i'm thinking like oh that's funny because somebody had me make a whistle special for that uh but i'm there like yeah well you know there's a lot of winds out there and africa have kept me busy for a lifetime and so but there was there was this move to get back to being influencers where it makes a difference Right. Yeah. And there's so many different ways to do it. R Renee and I, before the show, were talking about how um, social media, um, and, and this is a conversation I'm having everywhere right now. It seems that social media has created an opening for people to feel like they can just be mean. And it's really um, interesting. And so we were talking about that. And this story kind of loops a little bit into that, but not that much. It's a little bit off track, but I, I think 
you'll be able to see how we can loop it back into this conversation. I, um, I was coming home from teaching a workshop at Omega once, and it was, um, it was during a mega, mega, mega storm. And I didn't think I was, I was going to get out for weeks. And I did get out, but then I got stuck on an airplane for three hours. You know, one of those planes where they board you and, um, and you're stuck on the plane for three or four hours and, and nothing's happening. And so I'm sitting next to a man, the, the plane is completely crowded, and I pull out the book that I was reading, which was a, a Michael Crichton book. And um, he looks at me, and I guess because I brought out a Michael Crichton book, I don't know what got triggered for him, but he looks at me and he said, I just want to let you know I don't believe in global warming. And... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm get, we're, we're like going to not for three hours and then be in the air for another four hours. And so I, I sat inside myself for a moment before I commented and um, I just said, what kind of experience do you want to have for the next seven hours? What kind of experience do you want to have for the next seven hours? And I... I said to myself, I don't want to sit. I just taught for seven straight days. I don't want to sit and fight with this man for seven hours or have negative energy between us for seven hours. And so I, I just stayed neutral and just started conversation with him. And it turned out that he was a nuclear physicist at Los Alamos, New Mexico. And so of course I got triggered, completely triggered by that. And I was like, well, I'm not going there either. You know, I'm not spending the next seven hours telling him how I feel about him. And you know, we just started talking as people. I didn't react. I stayed so neutral. And that seemed to create some kind of doorway. I mean, of course, what most people would do at this point is put on their headphones and make believe they're listening to music, which is <laughs> a well-known thing that people do, even though they're not listening to anything, just to not have to have a conversation <laughs> with the person sitting next to them on the plane. Um, but I didn't do that. And we just talked. We just talked as people. And by the end of our time, um, he started to embrace what I was saying about global warming, and I didn't get down on him about his job. We actually had a really intelligent conversation. And so one of the ways that we can be influencers is by actually working with taking the high road, which is one of our most pop one of our most popular shows on the shaman's cave that is in the archives and that you can watch and listen to of you know when when you can uh not just allow yourself to get triggered by everything outside of you by the cruelness on social media and by the different opinions that you have uh, with people who you're going to be in contact with, when you can hold neutral ground and when you can go into your spiritual self and go beyond personality and ego, you can actually end up planting amazing seeds um, in other people that in the right time is going to grow into a new consciousness for them. And by doing that, you become a powerful influencer. Absolutely. And, you know, because what I've been experiencing lately is anytime there's a topic of, of any, any, any importance or not, that if I share it onto my, my Facebook wall, there's always 10 to 15 comments below it. I guess I am an influencer because people are looking at it. And, and, I didn't, it's not that I don't want people to have their opinions, but they're, it, it's, we're just using it as a source to, to force what we think is so right and so just for other people. And I was more in the moment sharing the humanness of the story 
and the other person's human experience. And so I, I've tended to start to edit myself all the time. So I've become an influencer of like silly jokes and, and how you feel, you know, blah, 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 which doesn't spark any real meaningful conversation, but it's just because the conflict is something that I, I choose to avoid at all costs. And, and that doesn't feel authentic either. Yeah, I think how, I mean, I, you know, every situation is individual. I don't have a formula for how I work with everything because if you move into spirit self, and you move out of ego, you will be informed at the moment. Uh, in my teacher trainings, I, I train teachers, I, and people say, um, how do you deal with, how do you deal with, how do you deal with, I, I can give a lot of guidance about um, group dynamics and when group dynamics get ugly. Um, I could give a, a lot of information about that from what I've learned over 35 years. But the absolute best information I can give my students is you're in spirit self. And so you're, all of a sudden, you're going to find the right words. If, you, if you're not reacting from ego, if you don't freak out and you're not reacting from ego, but you move into your spirit self, spirit self knows the right words always knows the right words. And so the point that I'm trying to make about this is there's no formula of how to be an influencer, or how to change people um, who are confronting you. And it's always through projection. It's always through projection because nobody knows um, who you are. Uh, people who are coming to my Facebook page and, and Renee, your Facebook pages, they don't know who we are. They only know our image of what's being presented to the public. And so there's a lot of projection um, that goes on. And so I, I find that for myself, I always um, say, that I honor where you're at. I, I, this is how you feel. And you're speaking your truth. And I just want to share that um, this isn't who I am, or this isn't part of who I am. I, I feel like, you know, a, this is a projection. Um, or I might just share, I have a different opinion, and this is my different opinion. And we all have the right. Um, to have our opinions. And, and I have to say um, that with some of the meanest statements that have, been, that have come at me, sometimes they're real teaching moments for me of, um, it's like I get blindsided, but sometimes it makes me look within to, to at least stop and at least check in to see if there's any truth in this. For me, is mm -hmm. there any truth in this for me? Did I actually step out of bounds? And if I did, I'll go, you know what? I reflected on this. I don't agree with everything that you said, but I, I can see your point. I can see that um, I need to spend more attention um, on taking care of this particular issue. Or I can say, um, you know, we all have our own perceptions and I have a completely different perception than you at this point. But it gets tricky because you see um, what happens on Facebook and, and I don't spend much time on Facebook basically because it's not healthy for me to do it. But you can, when I do spend it, you can see an energy comes like this and energy comes like this and it keeps exploding. And so a lot of what's influencing Facebook right now is exploding energies instead of using the Taoist and, and, and Buddhist principles of meet the energy and let it naturally transform. And that's what happened to me with the man uh, and, and the airplane was neither of us went like this. We, we, we talked. And, and we came together and our differences just naturally transformed. And 
we both left the plane with different points of view because we didn't just explode. And that's a way of being an influ a good influencer is uh, not exploding, um, but bringing, uh, meeting the energy and bringing it into a neutral space. And what we're seeing right now on social media is explosion. And because that's a projection of what's happening in the collective, there's an explosion going on in the collective. And so uh, we're bringing that projection um, into our conversations right now. Yes, it seems like we have no gray in the world at the moment, that there's this one side that everything is this way and the other side, everything's this way. And like, I kind of look like, well, how many children do you have? Or, you know, like what, you know, what are you having for dinner tonight? Or, or what makes us, we're forgetting the humanness. Like right. even, even the doctors who are doing all the research that you may or may not agree with are people. Right. They don't go to the lab today to sit there and think about like, well, how can I off, you know, a couple of million people today by, you know, this new medication or something that I'm thinking about. Now, do I think that there's greed in the world? Absolutely. But I don't think that the, the people really are trying, I think a lot of times uh, with like one of the big topics out there is, you know, to vaccinate or not to vaccinate at so many different levels. And, you know, some vaccinations have saved us on this planet. You know, they're, they're, they're not like an all, let's throw them all into the garbage can and they're no good. Because if we did, I mean, I, I think that the, the, we're at a time in our world where there's, there are going to be plagues. There, are, there is biological warfare. There's all of these things too, but we're not getting any closer to the middle on them when we're just, so uh, opposed on both sides because you know what is that force that's driving your opposition that's so strong as well as you know the other people meeting you and it's like almost like a technique to keep us outside from ourselves mm -hmm. yeah I, I think I, I think the most I, I think what you're saying Renee is um, is that when we we go beyond the projection that we're seeing and we go in and look at the human sides and one of the things that I've been promoting um, uh, I, I, I'm sorry I keep talking about my books but I write about these things <laughs> um, and it's welcome. time for your books we're gonna <laughs> sell them all again um, buy her books buy my book you know what <laughs> We can sell our books here. This is our projection and this is our reality. So <laughs> in my second book that I wrote, Welcome Home, Following Your Home, Your Soul's Journey Home, I talked about going back to the old time block parties. And I, I know that there are neighborhoods that that never stop doing them. It's just I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. And so um, there were ways that I grew up that uh, you know that didn't get kept up you know and i think having block parties you know or parties in your neighborhood where you invite people into your home and when you start to get to know people as people um it's amazing uh it's amazing what happens because you know i i, I know people who I, we, we have no agreement on anything, mm -hmm. on anything, <laughs> but yet we got to know each other as human beings. And so it doesn't matter. But when you don't take the time to, to go beyond what's triggering you and see that this is another human being with a beating heart and that um, if you believe in the principle of unity and oneness, that we're all different aspects of the divine and we're all playing out different roles. And when we can go beyond the role and when we step in and see this, this is a, a person on the planet who took this role um, in this earth play and I want to get to know who they are 
beyond the costume that they're wearing in the world. I, I want to know what, um, what they love, what they're passionate about, what they're fearful about, um, what their vulnerability is. And when you learn about the human side of people, and I know that you've had this experience with friends and loved ones, that if you love each other enough, if you honor and respect each other enough, just as humans on the planet, sometimes your different beliefs don't pull you apart as much as we're allowing them to do right now on the planet. There's such a pulling apart that's happening instead of coming together. So how do you become an influence, influencer in your community of bringing people together and just starting to meet each other as people and what kind of transformation comes from that absolutely when i owned a catering business that you know i had two jehovah witnesses work for me and they were like the most spiritual people they would always call me before the party to ask do you need anything you know can i stop and get anything at the store for you those kinds of little acts of kindness and and I work for a company that's based over in the South. And so there tends to be a lot more fundamental Christians who I work with. We don't talk, we, we, we talk, we bring our spirit to what we're engaged in. Not like, you know, your Sunday sermon or my shamanic, you know, soapbox, but like, how do we be better humans and show up for these addicts in need and, and you know, to bring, and so there's, when I, I see people like that, because that's what I'm really concerned about, something as deeper is happening with some of the social media and being an influencer that is transcending our human uh, need to connect. It's almost one more way we can disconnect and be polarized and be pulled apart and feel more and more isolated. You know, what came together to be this World Wide Web has now made us you know, more and more isolated. For me, more and more afraid to speak up about anything on social media, lest I have to deal with it. And I'm not, I'm a Libra, I'm a lover. I, I, don't, I don't want to get into deep, dark discussions and stuff like that. I wanna find out what makes us, what makes us happy. Right, well, you know, I, I did a crazy, I love to do crazy things. Um, I put myself in situations knowing exactly what I'm walking into. Unfortunately, <laughs> I put myself in situations not knowing what I'm walking into. But one time I, I agreed to be on a, um, uh, a, a Baptist uh, radio show talking about <laughs> And, you know, I, I wasn't going in, you know, of, I'm going to change these people's minds. I, I wasn't going in, I'm going to be an influencer, you know, <laughs> I said women are going to change the minds of Baptists. I was just curious about what was going to happen. So, you know, I, I have this one minister who's leading the interview and he brings in another uh, minister to uh, comment on our conversation. And so, you know, the other minister is always saying, you know, every sentence they say, that's the work of the devil and you're evil and you're gonna burn in hell. And I would just laugh and um, <laughs> I, didn't let, I, I walked in knowing what I was walking into and I wasn't gonna let myself be triggered. I just wanted to see you know, what was going to happen. <laughs> and so I just kept, I kept bringing the conversation back into what we had in common, you know, what we had in common. And, um, and I never got triggered once. This minister could tell me I was a de devil worshiper and evil every minute. And I always said, thank you for, thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and all of a sudden, it was an hour show, and something started to melt away because again, I never got triggered, and um, and I just kept trying to bring everything back into the human aspect, 
And, you know, I started talking about how in the Bible, Jesus talks about, um, you know, don't hide your light, shine your light in the world. And, and that's all I'm trying to talk about. That's all I'm trying to talk about. And the main interviewer of the show, he goes, you know, you sound exactly like my mother. You talk exactly <laughs> like my mother. And I adore my mother. And now I have to think about you. Because <laughs> I can't call you a devil worshiper or evil because you sound, you're talking to me just like my mother would talk to me. And so, you know, there are just so many lessons that we can learn. Um, it, it's all about how do we how do we stop only putting everybody in a box because of the, the costume they put on for this lifetime? Um, and I'm not saying I perfected this. I'm telling you my more successful stories. <laughs> I don't, not all of my stories are happy endings. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's when we remember that people are human. They're not the costume and they're not the role that they're playing. They're, there's a real beating heart. There's a real beating heart. And that oftentimes what's driving people um, to be uh, so mean is uh, their woundedness, how badly they've been hurt. And how can we be influences in our community when we can show compassion um, and get to know people and realize that some of their actions and some of their words are really a reflection of how bad their owie is in their mm. body, how bad their owie is. Um, and that's gotten me out of a lot, you know, because when people really go after me, um, I, I can see, I can see the, the wound that, that that's making them do this. And if I, if I'm willing to look beyond the wound, um, and just treat them with compassion, I, I, I believe that we can influence people in a positive way. They might not agree with us, but maybe we can calm down the energy, which really needs to happen because um, some of the controversy that's going on right now uh, is, is, is real, um, but some of it's pretty crazy, especially in, in the spiritual community. If we're all saying that, we're working in behalf of the planet and we're screaming at each other the whole entire time we're doing it. What are we doing for the planet? What are we doing for the planet when so much anger is being shared? Absolutely. I always thought up until like the last few years that there was like a spiritual community of people waking up, like, you know, that were in alignment with me. And, and then I saw that this, this last round of politics split that community. So like here we're all trying to wake up and, and be of, of use for the world for you know the next seven generations. And we're having inbreeding and infighting and 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 so for me what I always do is I always look at whatever comes up as a teaching moment. And how can I use this? Because one of the things as an influencer, I mean, you can go blindly by and get out of integrity and, and have your flock following you and say, oh yeah, they're teach a good teacher, but they're out of integrity. Well, my rule for me is like, how do I live my life in integrity? And that's the attractor model. So when something comes up that that's really uncomfortable for me, I always put, I always use it as a mirror to go deeper into what is being triggered? Why is this being triggered? And, and recently, the, the one that's come up is like, why don't I want controversy on my wall? Like, is there something about me that's not standing firm enough in my principles that I'm not, you know, or that I'm just a, an in-betweener? I, I think that, yes, the world is heating up. And that's part of the natural cycle of the world. Uh, are we influencing it? Yes, we we're overpopulated, you know, there's all of these other things. So being that I always look at things from both sides, 
it's just how I'm wired. And so I don't have those strong, strong stands on either, either side of the new wall. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, I think that's just how my makeup is. Yeah. You, you do a lot more on Facebook than I do. I, um, I, when I get, uh, some amazing download, I, I put in a ama my amazing download on Facebook, but that's really all I do. Um, it really is a time issue for me because I'm spending way too much time on the computer and um, and so I have to be careful how much time I spend on Facebook. And um, there's always, there's the, oh, thank you, Sandra. That's such, so beautiful. Um, you know, you always know the right thing to say. <laughs> but there's always people who uh, disagree with me, always people who disagree with me. If people use curse words to disagree with me, those are the only, um, those are the only comments I pull um, because, because then that changes the field into into such ugliness that um that's something i can't embrace and and as an influencer i can at least try to shift the the field of energy but if people disagree with me um again i you know oftentimes i say i honor that we have a different opinion you know and Thank you for sharing your opinion. <laughs> she's way more, she's way nicer than me in case you hadn't noticed. I either remove, I remove the post or remove my post so I don't have to deal with it anymore because social for me was about being social and about being friendly and about sharing good things. And so it's not for me a place where I get into heavy into the topics and stuff like that. If you really want to know what I believe, come watch us over here at the Shaman's Cave or ask me, right. you know, don't assume you know who I am because, uh, because I share something that my assistant wrote or that I sh shared something, you know, that just seemed funny, you know? I mean, I'm more of about like, let's lighten it up a little bit because we're taking ourselves way too serious and, you know, the wind can come over and knock you all off right onto your butts any second, you know, you're, you're not paying attention. And, I think sometimes that's what I love about the winds is like when I'm out of integrity, I won't be wind slapped. I don't need you to do it. The winds will really, they'll get me, slap me right side up the head and say, Hey, you're out of integrity here. Right. And so we all have to, maybe we all need to go back to our own spiritual centers and decide what's right for us. And if it's right for us, do we really need to be splattering it out for the rest of the world? Or would just live in our own rightness and our own centeredness about who we are, and then we can get back to sharing the good things in the world. Absolutely, and and I do believe a, lo a lot of it um, comes back to, you know, I'm going to just keep repeating the same thing because it's the seed that I want to plant is um, when you can look beyond what you're seeing um, of a person's role in the world and step into their human side and and have compassion for them because we were all wounded on some level we've all been wounded on some level um that can bring us back into a completely different way of conversations instead of throwing dirt is at each other like we did as a child um taking the time to listen reflect not react and we we actually talked about this on one of our our shows of how to heal toxic thoughts which was another beautiful show that you should listen to the archive is that um what we taught on that show was when you react that's when you shoot the psychic dart the psychic arrow that not only affects that one person who you think you're attacking but if you believe in the principle of oneness that attack attacked you and it attacked your loved ones, and it attacked every single living being on the planet. So as a spiritual being, are you willing to take a deep breath when you see something that you don't agree with, and instead of reacting, step back 
look at the woundedness of where the, this person is coming from or the fact that they're just projecting onto you because they don't know who you are as a human and take a step back and have compassion and start to make your comments from a place of compassion saying, I don't agree instead of sending a psychic dart or arrow that ends up hurting you, your loved ones, and every living being on the planet. Wow, enough said. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but what I do want to share is that Renee and I uh, were also doing a show on um, on how to, um, how to bring more ceremonial work into our community. So it's almost like this is a two-parted show where we're talking about some of the influences that are going on right now and how we can uh, change things if we take a step back and, and see people as humanness. But we're also going to follow this with a show on how to actually bring ceremony into your community. So um, there's a bigger picture than what we just shared on this particular show. Absolutely. And on that show, Sandra's actually helping me out with a community university group that I have, which is an archive of um, wisdom keepers that I've been keeping videos. I was early adopter to videos. So my archive has things from like 10, 15 years ago. And I'm adding to this body of wisdom in a sacred community university library. So I'm going to pull that out and we're going to actually have Sandra teach us how we can do, how we can bring ceremony to our community. Um, and I'm very excited about sharing that in a bigger platform so people can get excited about this library I'm building as well. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're, we're, we're bringing up all kinds of issues on our show um, because we really want to address some of um, not just the beauty of the spiritual path, but the challenges of the spiritual path. And so we're going to have shows that, you know, we share beautiful spiritual practices mm -hmm. and we're going to have shows where we talk about some of the controversy that's going on right now. And um, that brings us back to a place of wholeness. So um, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Renee. And thank you. And if you want to know more about our show and you want to watch some of the archives, go over to shamanstv.com, sign up in the inbox, and you'll never miss another show. And then join us in conversation. Let's keep this conversation going over at the Shaman's Cave like how you show up as an influencer in your life and what you can do to, to be that pillar of, you know, so we can become lighthouses instead of, you know, boxing, boxing stars or whatever we are. So thank you very much, Sandra, and everyone out there listening. And remember to go to shamanstv.com where um, uh, you can see uh, all the shows and also get our schedule. So blessings, everyone. Mm -hmm.